Hello everybody, Chaz Large here with another fix it video for you and on the bench today, look at this old beastie, this is a quad amplifier, uh, that's the main power amplifier part of it and this is the control unit with all its uh, fancy buttons and uh, levers, uh, so we've got bass and tilt, I think that's what we call treble and there's filters and so on. Um, and we've got different selections of inputs uh, on the back of this control unit which I can turn around and show you are either phono inputs or the good old-fashioned DIN socket inputs um, and also uh, power sockets to feed uh, different devices so all I've got at the moment on this particular piece of kit is the control unit and the amplifier um, and it has got a fault I've just been doing some rudimentary testing um, and uh, it has got a fault on it um, whilst it plays back sound quite quite nicely oh hang on uh, inadvertently pressed the monitor button so it's playing back quite nicely uh, through my test speakers the only problem is it's only on the right hand channel the left hand channel is very low um, we've got a, a control down the bottom here uh, which you may be able to see bring it up closer we've got a switch that says bow slow uh, slash mon if i switch it to mon both channels are exactly the same okay and this balance control here just uh, goes up and down so if i put the balance in the middle and switch to, to balance i've got more on the output on the right hand side and if i go left there's hardly any i can turn it up a bit don't want to turn the wick up too loud but definitely it is low on the output side. Now, I've put uh, different inputs onto the different uh, connectors and the fault is across all the channels. So it's a main left-hand channel amplifier or pre-amplifier problem. That's what we're gonna have to find uh, with a little bit of investigation. So let's press on with that and do some more testing. Uh, I'm gonna have to use tones and the scope to see exactly what's going on here. Right, I've got everything set up as I want it. On the back of the um, uh, control unit, we've got some output sockets um, for different levels of output from this device. Um, so we've got on these top two sockets here, and sorry, on the, uh, the left hand side here, we've got a 5 volt output, and on this one, we've got a 1.6 volt output. And that's presumably for going for other different devices so what i plan to do is to put into the radio input um, my test signal one kilohertz test signal um, and i can demonstrate that now okay and you can hear the difference so if i put this um, my scope onto the output of the red the right hand channel the good channel on 1.6 volts I'll put that on there and then if I go to the scope so that's that's sort of what I was expecting to see okay so that's on the 5 volts output from the right hand channel so if we put the same input into the left hand channel and then monitor the left hand channel output for 5 volts we're getting a lot less output which is exactly what I expected to see so um, this effectively is showing us that all the way through this control unit the output is incorrect so um, the next thing I'm just going to try and see what the output is to the actual power output there's a connector here this uh, link wire here that goes to the power output now I don't know whether I need to turn the quad amplifier off I mean it's, it may it should just switch the output stage out okay which is good and now I can see what is coming out of this that's going to the power amplifier let's go so that's the left hand output to the main power amplifier and if we put the same input into the right hand channel and then look at the output 
yeah, it's much bigger as I expected. So I'll just go back to the left again. And there it is. Oh, wait, no, not connected. Okay. There it is, much lower. So basically what that's doing for me is confirming that the output of this is low. It's not a fault with the power output stage. So I can go, whew, I haven't got to touch that bit. I've got to go inside here. So let's turn that back down again. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this off before I connect the power amplifier again, just in case there's an issue. I don't want to put anything through it that's not supposed to be there. So there we are. So I'm going to go back onto the test output there and see that it's low on that, that one. On the left hand side, I'll just turn it up. So you can see there it's quite low. And if I swap the input to the right hand channel, it's that much bigger. Okay, so next thing we've got to do is get inside this. But I think before we do that, I'm going to have a look and see if I can find a service manual for it, just to give me a bit of a clue as to where to go. Right, after a bit of uh, sorting out, I did manage to find uh, a manual for both parts, the 303, which is the output stage, and this part here, which is called a Quad 44 controller preamp, etc. And I managed to get a manual for that, so let's have a look at that. There it is. And this is a block diagram for it, and hopefully from this we can determine roughly where the problem lies because all of the inputs are all going into this area here in the middle um, before they go out to the output stage which is there let me just zoom in a little bit more um, so these are the input um, into here this is a switch unit electronic switch unit there uh, and it's mother and power supply it says there and the outputs um, come out of there and go into the volume control um, from the volume control through the tone controls and we've got the balance and mono switch there so we've got an output uh, from the left hand channel as well um, before they go out through here to the output socket now because we are uh, effectively the same throughout all of this uh, the problem I feel is to do with the um, this preamp circuit here or the tone control volume control circuit this block here which just says tone so this is where we get the inputs into this board for each channel and there we've got the various controls that we've got all the way through and the monitor outputs here um, where we were testing earlier on and we saw different levels from left and right channels so um, the left channel is this one here so we're looking really at um, something back from this point yeah so I don't think it's gonna this is just a relay um, so this is the output that goes out off to the um, main power amplifier so the fault is going to be around here I would guess somewhere IC502 um, which is a I think it says TL071 so the thing we need to do is obviously go on to this and identify supplies now only one little problem we've got with this at the moment and I've got it all set up and the um, connections are all made but I've also um, not got the scope on there just at the moment but I've taken the, the cover off and I'll put it back on again for a reason I'll show you the reason if I just a little won't worry, worry about the tone but as soon as I slide the amplifier out of the case we have a huge hum. Now, the metalwork of the case is shielding. 
all this area so I'm introducing hum and all that in there so I'm going to have to put up with that that's that's all down to the output stage picking up noise it's not the preamp because I've got the volume turned right down so the sound is still there so hopefully we'll still be able to identify where the fault is and I was I'm guessing it's going to be on this board here somewhere that's where we're going to have to concentrate so uh, I need to go and do some other stuff we'll come back to monitoring and checking this board out in a little while right well having got the the diagram ready and uh, I've got this now in a position where we can look at it it all looks um, quite nice and clean inside but one thing I did notice um, as I was having a little look around inside and that's down here where there is a capacitor and you may be able to see all up here is like what I would term as the remains of an exploded capacitor and that capacitor there and that one there and these there's two more back here they actually look like they've been replaced they don't look like original capacitors to me I don't know quite what's making me say that but I've got a feeling they've all been replaced but the, the other main reason that's making me a little bit nervous about this repair is that when we look on the bottom side of the circuit board over here we can see that it has had a major repair possibly a blow there's a bit of um, let's see if I can get this in a slightly better angle for the camera to see yeah you can see there that the circuit around there has actually been either blown off due to some explosion and it's been rewired with a piece of enameled wire this this part here has been repaired because the, the print is completely gone this part here looks like it's been cleaned up because it's been burnt this IC certainly has been changed. Uh, I haven't yet to work out whether that's the left hand channel, but it might not be. That might be the right hand channel and that's working fine. So I'm not gonna go there unless I have to. But unfortunately with these amplifiers, because they're made by a small British company in 1970 something, they didn't print screen print component labels so all we've got is a label on the board to say what the board type is also over here as well you can see there's also been board repair work done here and here there's some solder work been done and all of those capacitors I was pointing out they've all been resoldered so I'm guessing they've all been replaced somebody's come in here and done a complete capacitor rebuild on the on the main board there's capacitors on the other the other motherboard this is actually the board that's called the motherboard in the manual and the types of capacitors that are in there are totally different but again they've been that's been replaced that's been replaced well the the, the pins have been sold let's put it that way but these big ones here haven't been replaced they look the original solder on this side of the board looks as, as it was so I'm guessing that we've got a problem with that I'm hoping it's not going to be something around here but I've yet to work out which chip is which causing the problem on the left hand channel it may be of course I need to turn it over again because I've got the wires all tangled don't worry it's it's switched off at the socket so I'm not going to go grabbing anything that's live but we can also see that whoever's worked on this before a company called IAG customer service whoever they are um, they worked on this on the 24th of October 2016 so seven years ago 2016 
18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, sorry, six years ago. Maths was never my strong point. <laughs> but anyway, that's that's the IC of concern and the capacitors around there. So, right, well, it's been a, a trial and effort, but I managed to find a, a circuit diagram that was relevant to this board. Uh, this is board number 12784-1. The modified version of this amplifier and there's quite a few manuals available for all the earlier versions and boards but there wasn't anything specifically for this until I found this uh, current um, PDF file that contains at least the circuit for it and it highlighted something that I was I hadn't really sort of looked at all the previous diagrams showed the um, the IC is VNTL70 TL072, uh, 71s rather, which are single op amps. But when I got this circuit, I suddenly looked and I thought, hang on a minute, there's a lot more op amps here than um, is on the board. And so basically, I thought, okay, let's have another look. So um, I um, redrew the, the diagram onto, um, just quickly show you briefly, onto a, um, a, a photo I took of the picture. Of the board uh, to sort of get the layout of it and that sort of gave me a little bit more um, impetus to go into it so then I started to check the output signals both when the switch was switched to mono and um, stereo across these two outputs and the, sure enough when the output um, was uh, for uh, mono it was fine and I can show you that and and also show you something else to do with this and you can hear there's a tone and I've got it switched to mono uh, so uh, sorry I've got it switched yeah got it switched to mono right but I found a resistor had broken off Now when I switch to stereo, it's working fine. So basically, the fault was, <laughs> all the way along the line, there's this little resistor here had come loose, off of there, and that's all it was. And that's one of these two resistors here on um, the input, these two 1.5k resistors. Uh, on the back end of the uh, balance controls which are there so all I need to do is resolder that resistor and we should be back to normal so a lot of faffing about to get to that point just going to resolder that and then I'll test it and show you so that's all it was it was just a loose resistor on the back of this switch uh, between mono uh, and balance so there's no change now and switching those so it's the same output on both and also it cured the hum do you remember the hum a little bit earlier on in the video um, and that was obviously where that resistor was just picking up mains hum um, as we move it about there's no hum now at all so that's pretty much it we've uh, finally got to the bottom of this without uh, too much trouble effectively other than trying to find um, diagrams um, for these quad amplifiers but I've now got quite an extensive selection of diagrams and pictures so if I get another one in I've got some background information anyway I've just got to put the cover on box it back up send it back to the customer so thanks very much for watching hope you've enjoyed it like and subscribe obviously if you like the channel and uh, we're nearly at a thousand subscribers that would be a great uh, event time take care look after yourselves see you on the next video